Hello everyone, I am Sanjay Gupta. In this module, I am going to demonstrate future method example. Let's understand the scenario first. So we need to create a future method to count how many cases are created through phone, web, email. So these are basically picklist values. Those are available on case. So picklist value name is uh, case origin. So we need to put the counted value on account in three different fields. So these three fields you need to create on account so that counted value will be available um, under those fields with the help of future method. And after implementation of future method, we need to ensure proper code coverage as well. So let's jump to developer console. And now I'm going to implement future method first, and then we'll be implementing its test class. So here, name of my class will be calculate case origin. And inside this, I'm going to create a future method. So whenever we implement any future method, we need to write this at the rate future annotation. So this will, be, this will be the method and method name is count cases based on origin. And this method will be receiving a list of IDs and those IDs will be stored in this ACC IDs. Now, I'm just saving this code and jumping to object manager. Uh, and I already created three fields. So if you want to run this code, so in your org, you need to create these three fields cases through email, cases through phone and cases through web. So I will be using these three fields so that I can count cases and uh, these uh, fields will be populated those counted values. And these fields you need to create on account object. So now, first of all, I'm going to create list of account. So naming it as ACC list, then I'm going to write SOQL select ID and uh, now I need to use these APIs. So this is basically parent to child SOQL. So uh, along with account, all related cases will be queried. This is child relationship name and ID and origin are the fields of case object. Now here I'm writing from account where ID in ACC IDs. So this way our list will be created. So I'm just uh, breaking it so that uh, it will be readable. So uh, these fields are of account and uh, these fields are of cases and uh, where ID in this ACC IDs list, those accounts along with related cases will be queried. Now I'm going to implement a for loop. This for loop will iterate on this ACC list and inside this loop, I'm going to create three variables. So uh, we need to count uh, these three things, email, phone, and web. So I'm going to create three variables and initializing them with zero. So email, web, and phone. So initially these three variables are having uh, zero. Then I'm implementing one more loop that is nested loop. So it will iterate on ACC dot basis. So first loop is iterating on ACC list. So one by one account will be available in this ACC variable. And through that ACC, all the related cases will be iterated in the nested loop. 
Now here you need to check if C A dot origin equals to phone. So here you can count phone plus plus. Else if C A dot origin equals to web. So you will be counting web plus plus. Then else if C A dot origin equals to email. So we need to count email plus plus. So this way cases will be counted and here uh, this case loop will be terminated. Now after termination of this loop, uh, all cases related to one account are counted along uh, like basis on the origin and their values are available in this phone, web and email field. So now what we can do, we can assign those values into these fields. So first I'm going to assign email. Now ACC dot cases through phone. So here I need to assign phone, phone variable, then ACC dot cases through web equals to web. So this way all the values are assigned to particular case. So uh, this way whole uh, this nested loop bunch will be iterated and uh, all the cases will be counted along with a particular account. Now after completion of these nested loops, I just need to check if ACC list dot is empty. So if it is not empty, so I have provided this not, if this list is not empty, then update ACC list. So this way, if we pass collection of IDs, so this future method will run asynchronously and uh, all the cases will be counted and uh, counted value will be uh, populated on the accounts. So now I'm saving this code and we need to test it. So before that, I'm just moving to account and I'm just opening one account. So here we have two cases already available. So I'm going to create three more cases so that we can have at least one uh, case for each origin. So here I am putting origin as phone. then email and then web. Okay, so now I'm going to open developer, sorry, and execute an MS window. And here I'm going to create a list of account and I'm applying a query select ID from account. So I'm fetching all the accounts, right? And now I am going to iterate. So before that, I'm creating list of ID, ACC IDs equals to new list of ID. So iterating on ACC list and uh, adding ACC ID into this another list. Now from here, I can call this method. So just copying the name of method and here I'm passing ACC IDs. Now before moving here, I'm just going to open Apex jobs. So here you can see, uh, yeah, this uh, scheduled Apex is queued, but uh, other uh, other than that, uh, no other job is available. So now I'm going to execute this code and you will see one entry there. And then we will see this account, whether uh, this code is working fine or not. So I'm just clicking on execute, coming here, doing a refresh. 
So here you can see future method is completed. And uh, now I'm moving to this account. And uh, here you can see uh, two cases are uh, created, like their origin is phone. Uh, two cases created through web and two case, uh, sorry, one case is created through email. So this way, if you have uh, related cases, so they will be counted automatically with the help of this future method. And it will run asynchronously because we are using this at the rate future annotation. So this is one part of this code. Now, another part is to implement test class so that we can uh, make sure uh, this code is having proper code coverage. So now I'm going to implement a test class. So name of test class will be calculate case origin test. So if you are a developer, so this implementation of test class is very much important. So if you want to implement a test class, so you need to put this at the rate is test annotation before the class and at the rate is test annotation before the method as well. So this will be the test method. So test count cases. So here first we need to create the data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a list of account. Now I'm going to iterate a loop. This loop will iterate five times. Now inside this loop, I'm going to create five account records. So five account records will be uh, created through this loop and I'm going to add those accounts into this list so that through one DML, I can insert these account records. So here I'm going to insert ACC list. So this way account records will be created. Now, after creation of account record, I need to create cases. So for that, I'm creating list of case. And I need to create list of ID as well, where I can store all account IDs. Those are created above. So these two variables are created. Now I'm going to iterate account list. So I iterated this loop on ACC list. So first of all, I'm going to add ACC ID into this list, right? And now inside this loop, I'm going to create three loops so that I can create multiple related cases. And always remember whenever you implement any test class, so you should uh, test your uh, Apex code with bulk data. So this way, like uh, here I created five accounts. Now I'm going to create five or maybe like multiple cases. Uh, some cases, uh, their origin will be phone. For some cases, origin will be web. For some cases, origin will be email. So in teaser, I equals to one, then I less than three. So this, this loop will create three cases. So case C equals to new case, then C dot status equals to new, C dot origin equals to phone. And uh, I'm going to add this case into this list, right? So this way through this loop, three cases will be created and uh, those cases will be uh, having origin as phone. Now I'm iterating one more loop here again. Um, this loop will iterate three times and this time case origin will be email and I'm pasting it one more time. So again, it will be iterated three times and this time case origin will be web. So this way total nine cases will be created for each account. So we created five accounts. So one account will be having nine cases. So this way total 45 cases will be inserted 
with this code. Now, after this, I just need to insert this list. So basically, okay, there is some error. So let me just resolve that first. So that error is gone automatically once I save the code, right? So this way, basically I created the data and after completion of this loop, I'm going to insert case list. So this way at top, we inserted accounts and now we inserted cases. So now it's the time to call that uh, future method. So. Now I'm going to implement this block test dot start test and test dot stop test so that when this test class will run, so new or fresh set of governor limits will be available. Now inside this, I'm going to call the method. So I'm just copying this method name dot and this method. And here you can see we already added all the account IDs into this ACC IDs list. And this is passing here and I'm putting a semicolon. So this way uh, your future method will be executed. Now, after execution of the future method, we need to query the accounts. So, so I created this variable and uh, here I'm going to apply one SOQL. So, uh, we need to select. So I'm just copying this from here and putting over here. So we need to query ID and uh, these three fields from account where ID in ACC IDs, right? So uh, we are using this list and uh, if account ID is available in this uh, list of ID, so those will be queried and will be available in this updated ACC list. Now I can apply assert equal. So So as we know, like for each account, we created uh, three cases for each origin, right? So I'm just testing uh, this three equals updated account zero. So uh, this AC updated ACC uh, will be having multiple account records. So I'm just checking zeroth index record if uh, it's uh, field, this cases, cases through email will be having three, then this assert will pass, otherwise it will throw an error. So I'm just going to copy this And here I need to change these field APIs. Right, so I am checking all three fields whether they are updated properly or not. Okay, so here I need to add S as well, assert equals. So this way, this test class is completely implemented. Now I can just run it. So I'm just opening this tab and moving here, clicking on run test. Okay, so it is failing. So let's check what error is there. Okay. Oh, so actually uh, there is some mistake. Uh, I just created cases, but I forgot to add those cases to account. So I just need to add this as well. So this I need to add inside each loop. Uh, 
I save the code and again I'm clicking on run test. Okay, so it is saying expected three in actual two. So let me see. Okay, so I got the point. Uh, actually, I just used less than instead of less than equals to. So that's why it is counting. Like loop is iterating two times. So two cases will be created. So I just need to add this equals to as well. So these are minor mistakes that we do while uh, developing code. So uh, this way, like I, I hope you understood how we can uh, rectify the errors as well. So I again save the code, clicking on run test. And this time you can see uh, cases are passed, right? So there is no error. It means all the assert are passing. And if I go here and click on this all test, so you can see 100% code is covered. So this way, I hope you understood how we can implement future method uh, uh, for the use case that I uh, showed you in the beginning. So I hope you understood how uh, it is executing. Thank you.